<laughs> uh, we're we're live. I think I think we're live. Hello, hello. It is Dead Laws session two. How's everyone doing? <laughs> it's been a week. Uh, it feels like yeah, it's, it's been, been seventy five years. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do more Dead Laws. It was both a long wait and it suddenly snuck up on me somehow. Still. Yeah, I <laughs> am going through withdrawals. Oh, you, you poor thing. You, oh my god. Did we just play, play they, last night or something? <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, I, had a, I had a busy weekend, so I'm just like... Uh. <laughs> you I've been like, in a dissociative feud writing for like a week, and then like time <laughs> teleported me here. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for me, it's like I it, it, people don't realize like we took six months off from Cape Escape, um, you know, and it's been a lot of planning for Ka and I and writing in the, the interim and trying to make sure that we're ready for this. But like everyone else gets to just hang out and be like, yeah. oh, I can't wait for the next thing. I can't look. I can't wait to look forward for it. I've been like edging for, for <laughs> months now. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see this play out. Uh, I can't wait. Children call it gooning now. Oh, they oh, sure do. No. I was like, I should figure out some of these character dynamics the day before our first stream. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have a I have a 40,000 word character Bible <laughs> just sitting in Google Docs. It's different folks. It's like why you bring different kinds of people to an escape room so you, you can actually win with your different yeah. approaches. It's pretty uh, me. I'll break everything. I'll find that fucking key. <laughs> that, that's the kind of player I like to have. One so, that makes me think of things I did not think of in prep. Behind the scenes, we have been completely overwhelmed by the fan response because holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> there are already comic yeah. adaptations of scenes that we that happened last week. Like, I don't, there's, a, there's been a mountain of stuff. I cannot believe this the show. Fan are fast. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been an amazing week seeing all of the creations from everywhere. Like seeing it all across Tumblr, Twitter, Blue Sky. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, this show doesn't have a huge reach, so I'm just like, that's. We have like a concentration of creative people watching. Yeah, very, there's a very high density of like viewer engagement to viewer fan creation. And I think, you know, it's worth it's worth just saying in a recording here during the live stream, like if you guys want to make comics or, or like, you know, fan omake or little, you know, memes and stuff like feel free to meme, meme us up. Remix yeah, it, do whatever I put them you want. In, like, I it's do a very little slideshow in the bonus video, Idle Banter, which I forgot to probably, I should probably should have explained that at some point in the first episode of this show. But like, the, the schedule is that we do one stream a week. I split that into two videos at the part where we do a break. And then the bonus discussions that I have recorded, I put into like a third video called Idle Banter that's just like us actually talking about the game instead of as the game. And that's that. And that's where all the fan art goes, because oh my god. Oh my there's god, there's so much. <laughs> Holy hell. So, heck. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, th thank you so much for all the fan art and all of the posts and the retweets. Uh, it really helps us a lot when that sort of stuff goes out. Uh, I know very personally for me, it was it was a really flattering experience to see, you know, the Beck art that people did. I'm sure everyone else feels this way. There was a lot of Argo. There was a lot of Chance uh, and Conrad and just every single moment. I know Lynn got a really funny comic by Perp today. So, so good. Uh, thanks. So good. Thanks again to, to everyone who, who did that because it's really awesome. And Nicodemus got to be daddy. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think the, uh, the shooting the star, the runaway success, was our good Sheriff Stilton. Yeehaw. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Stilton, the fan favorite. <laughs> Ev everyone, you know, give, give a good uh, moment of yeehaw for the, the long, the long resting Stilton. Rest yeehaw. in peace, my friend. Uh, so I think when we start up today, we're going to take a look at the aftermath of that. Are we are we all ready to get started? Is everyone stretched to unpack this mess? Yeah. Ready to rock. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I go. think we're, re we're good to get going then. So let's go ahead and start ourselves up. Let's see. Get some music going. Bring us back to the churchyard. Get our fire going, get nice and toasty. <laughs> <sighs> 
All right. Welcome to the Deadlaws Yule Log. <laughs> <laughs> so we return to Southpaw in the aftermath of a gunfight that broke out in and around the uh, sold chapel that stands on the edge of town. I don't know if I'd call him the perpetrator, but certainly the star of the gun show uh, has left the scene. He has decided combat is over and has made his way on down to Mortadella's meat wagon, leaving behind several bodies in his wake, along with the scattered remnants of the posse that was put together to fight this fire. On the ground, we see the collapsed body of Sheriff Stilton. Oh, no! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, it just struck me as just, a little funny. Just twisting the knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's good work. In his last moments, he had put himself between the legendary outlaw Taslin Beck and the young, innocent Kit, who now cries over his body. Now, <laughs> Nicodemus. <laughs> oh, Nicodemus, you were a little late getting to this particular party, and you just saw two men shot before your very eyes. Conrad nursing a nasty-looking gut wound and Sheriff Stilton, who took one straight to the chest. Who do you tend to first? Uh, who do I see first? Uh, you see both of them. Uh, you, uh, they're both uh, around like a semicircle around where they were confronting Beck outside uh, the burning church. So they're both pretty equidistant. OK, I'll go to uh, so Stilton Conrad. Is that what you said? Yeah, Conrad, who's uh, got a gut wound and Stilton, who is on the ground, still is bored. You know what? I think Conrad looks good for now. I'll check on him later, but I'm, I'm going to go for Stilton. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've got Conrad. All right. So you're going to take a look at Stilton then? Yeah. All right. So as you were approaching this gunfight, having just tended to the unconscious Rick Ryder already, uh, you saw the shot. You saw Beck plug him right in the chest, point blank. Now, usually there ain't no coming back from something like that. But when you get close, when you lean in, you do hear the faint beating of his heart, the faint scent of beans upon his shallow breath. Seems his <gasps> reflex to play possum even managed to fool the cold-blooded killer Beck. I said, he's hurt real bad, the kind of wounded to take a miracle to survive for more than a few moments. But you've seen miracles before, haven't you? You've seen them in the sunrise, reflected across the tranquil pond, in the delicate touch of a gentle breeze on a hot summer's day, in the birth of a new queen for a honeybee colony you thought had collapsed. Clutch in that book that has brought you so much wisdom, so much peace, a passage comes to mind. When we bring what is within out to the world, miracles happen. So the question is, Nicodemus, can you work us up a miracle, or has the sheriff yeed his last haw? I'm not much in the business of miracles, but I'm in the business of trying, so let's give it a try. <laughs> All right. So essentially, this would have been uh, your action on the last round of combat, doing a support role to help him with his vigor check to survive the aftermath of combat. So he has to roll a four on a D4 to survive combat. Your support check can help him with that. So okay. give me a healing roll and you can use a Benny on this if it doesn't go your way. You got a couple Bennies at your disposal. Let's go explosions. <laughs> All right, that's not gonna be good enough to help him out any. Do you wanna spend a Benny on that? I'll spend a Benny. All right, hit that Benny button in chat and then it'll automatically reroll it for you.
It didn't. Uh, the one, did you hit the one in chat? The I hit the one. Buttons. I hit the one on my character sheet, but I'll uh, just hit the one again. in chat. Yeah. Yeah. He means that you can hit a you can hit the Benny button on the roll. Yeah, that'll automatically. You might take have care to expand it. it or something though. Maybe. All right. So that is a four. That is enough to grant him a plus one on his vigor check. Do you want to let it sit there or see if you can get a raise and give him even more benefits on his vigor roll? How would I do that? So you could spend another Benny to try and get an eight. An eight is what you would need to give him a plus two to his roll instead of a plus one. Okay. I don't. I don't think I can roll an eight with a six dice straight. It means you have to. It means you have to roll a six and then it explodes and gets you roll yep. another another dice on top of that. Mm. That's the only way you could get that high. So do you want can to I... waste your Bennies on that or you want to save? <laughs> Damn waste. <laughs> you know what? Ooh. You know this is tough. This is tough. Is he, is um, he worth it? <laughs> You know what? He's worth. He's worth it. He's worth it. Let's do it. Can't believe God put his thumb on the scale. <laughs> All no, right, let's reroll let him that die. again. Oh, oh so you're close. getting closer. No. All right, last one. Last uh, one. I, I really want to save this man. Oh, oh, no! No! Oh, no! One short. All right, he's still right, getting a plus right. one on his roll, though. All right. I trust no. his best. <laughs> we'll see how that goes for him. And truth be told, I did a couple test rolls before we started tonight, and he rolled a one on every single one. So hopefully That's I got all the ones out of my system. That's how dice uh, work. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how they They're work. They're just like cards. Yeah. So let's see. He needs to roll a four, and you're giving him a plus one, so a three will be fine. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Still oh my God. Will <laughs> live. You lay your hands upon this man, this bullet straight through his chest, and you realize it's managed to thread the needle right between his lungs. So while there, there's a lot of blood and there's a lot of damage done, and he certainly won't be walking or talking anytime soon, you think you just might be able to save his life. All right. So with that successful vigor check, he is stable and he is not going to die immediately. He will have to roll on the permanent injury table later, but we can worry oh. about that later. Uh, fun fact, if he rolls brain damage on the permanent injury table, there is no change because he is already at the minimum value. Now he'll only say oh. yee like a Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> I got damn dirty like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I so, calm, I, I'm going to calm down this kid and then say, he's breathing. He's breathing, son. You look at this kid and give me a notice roll for reading his expression. Okay. <laughs> this, 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 damn thing. <laughs> this this kid is a stone wall. You can't read him at all. He seems like completely non-responsive as you tend to Stilton. You're not sure what's going through his mind, but it looks like he ain't quite as excited about seeing the legendary outlaw as he was a few minutes ago. No. Something about that romantic notion of shooting the sheriff seems to have spoiled having seen it firsthand. Yeah, did something happen since that was a crit fail? Uh, uh, as a crit fail, just you're not reading him at all. Okay, okay, okay. All right. uh, if that was a, a more high stakes roll, something terrible would have happened. But just reading the boy now. Got it, got it. I, I didn't it's, think so. But. It's yeah. like you've never seen a face before. <laughs> <laughs> Expressions. Never heard of them. <laughs> All right. Um, Meanwhile, Conrad's just bleeding over here. Well, Argo so, is uh, well <laughs> is, is has a long history of working miracles. Oh, does he? Yeah. So he's gonna come up to Conrad. Hey, how, how you doing, Conrad? You holding it together? N not really. No. Here, let me Vance let me just, just let me sitting just... here with bloody hands because he had let tried just... to help a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> 
Let me just take a look at you. Let, let me let me get those glasses for you. And he just takes Conrad's glasses off. Are you really qualified for this? And the moment the glasses off, he just hardest, full force, open hand slap across the face. <laughs> What the hell were you thinking? Do they not teach city folk anymore not to make a deal with the devil? Especially when they come out and come out, they're all non-hypothetical and actually walking the earth. When you meet a vampire on the road, you do not invite them in. What the fuck? <laughs> can, can anyone help me here? Uh, can, I, can I actually go over to Conrad and help him still? Oh, sure. He's just holding Conrad by the collar right now. It's, if you if this bow's black on the town, I, I so I swear to God, this will be the end of you. All right, Conrad looks bad, but you know I figure <laughs> I've, I've I've seen worse. <laughs> and I think now, if, <laughs> if you want to treat that wound immediately, you might have to tap into a little bit of your power. That's what I'm gonna do, actually. All right, excellent. So if you want to do that, you can give me a faith roll. Okay. All right. That's a success. That's not, that's not the faith roll. Oh. I was looking at the wrong dice. That's me harming Conrad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is also a success. All right. So let's see. Uh, with that, you actually get a raise. What is the effect of raising with that? <laughs> All right, um, that I believe would have actually taken care of two wounds, but Conrad only has one. So you just hey. do a really good job. And I can make more. <laughs> <laughs> As you lean in and tend to his wounds, you feel the words of your book of wisdom coming through to you and guiding your hand. And you see something a little strange, actually, as you're patching up Conrad. The flesh, the sinews that make up his body are changing a little bit at your touch. They're hardening and weaving together like vines. It almost looks like botanical mass is forming to patch that wound. But, Conrad, you feel the pain subsiding immediately in a way that is almost frightening. Like you almost worry you're going into shock from how suddenly the pain goes away. But it does go away, and that wound is removed. Has any of us seen Nico Demas do this before? I don't think Nicodemus has seen Nicodemus do this before. Oh. Yeah, he's Ar a little Argo bit missed it because about... he was looking down at his hands, which he realized are now covered in blood, and he's now wiping it on Conrad's shirt. <laughs> did he keep his? Does he wear gloves? Argo, oh. yeah, and yeah. Nicodemus. <laughs> Good. Yeah, he he's he's thinking. Uh, uh, what the? W what did you do? I didn't do nothing just patched you up with a little trick I knew with a little tie Maybe I... something's going around the town that caused this I don't I don't I don't this wasn't me I have so many questions that might have to wait holy hell thank you don't know if you should be thanking me but you're welcome and Argo what the hell is wrong with you man everyone in this town looks up to you for safety, they think y you can help? That nun in there, we don't know what she was gonna do. You were just hiding. I shot her thinking she might kill one of us and you're pissed off at me. What is wrong with you? You think I care about the nun? You just invited the devil into this town. We are oh, adrift in the God. middle of the ocean on the last piece of wood and we all just f felt it sink. I'd like to know what you think he would have done different. That man is scary. He shot I Rick. wouldn't want any part of him being mad at me. And yeah, you were a lot of help. At least what? I tried to help. I didn't try to blow up the town. 
All I knew is that people were in danger, and I was trying to help. If you don't like it, whatever. Argo's body is just on autopilot. He's just, like, redressing himself all perfect and prim and proper without even... As if his... As if it's not even, like, his head and his body are two, having two separate scenes. <laughs> Has he reacquired his shirt? That's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so none of you have seen this boxcar guy before? Only in town? In stories. But not in town. Not in town. No. He hey, ain't shows been up. here, and we've been stuck here a while. As you bring up that name, you do see Kit slowly mumble to himself, Boxcar Beck did this. <sighs> as much as I hate to say it, yeah, I think he just tried to kill me, or I guess maybe he wasn't trying to kill me because I'd be dead, but... If he got in here later than everyone else and he got an okay, he knows more about what's happening than any of us, I think. We can't afford to lose you. We need to look at that blood. Uh, blood. I almost forgot. I honestly had already forgotten about that <laughs> at this point, uh, but you're right. There, there's a bunch of things we got to figure out. Speaking of which, who's holding that jar of Rick Ryder's blood right now? <laughs> I believe I that say was it. Conrad. Yeah, I, I had right. it. So, <laughs> did it did it uh, get broken at any point of me getting sh like? <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't really matter because I soaked it up into a cloth. So, give me a yeah, you soaked that with your body for Conrad. Uh, give you a what? Notice. Let's see. Oh hell yeah! All right, Conrad. You take a look, and you see that this jar, briefly home to a bee, is that now contains the sample of Rick's blood, proves quite the strange sight. The once crimson fluid seems to have soured into a mass of black ichor that gyrates before your very eyes, forming countless tiny little spikes that point outwards in a particular direction. The, the heck? Sweet baby Jesus. Uh, okay, I mean, we've already got something to work with here. Don't know what it means, but... Blood don't normally do that, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely does not do this, no. <laughs> um, can I give another notice check? Yeah, what are you looking over? Let's see. Um, how, how much of the church is like left basically well I guess I'll roll first yeah so let's see as you said there were human I mean there were uh, there people definitely remains people's in there. remains in there yeah and you might yeah you didn't get oh, a, <laughs> you didn't get a too good of a look from your vantage <laughs> since you never went into the church yourself you're looking no. from way out here I'm going to stick with that. So I, I didn't find any, uh, there weren't any intact toes in there, huh? Um, you could probably go in and search for some, but it is actively on fire, and any toes there may have become property of the fire by now. Uh, I, th I, th I think I'm good for now. I'm good for now. All right. They're proper toasty. <laughs> no. <laughs> Delayed reaction. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, so if, it's, it's if they're already cooked for the goblin, I mean, maybe he likes some raw. Does it look like the fire is at risk of spreading outside of the church, like tall grass or anything like that? No, nah, thankfully, the, the church is pretty far away from the road in the rest of the town, and it's just dirt and dust around it. So even if you don't burn it out, it's just going to burn itself out. No risk of spreading, really, unless there's some real high winds that pick up suddenly. Should we go make sure this bet guy isn't starting trouble in the bar? Even if he is, I don't reckon we can do much about it. But probably. It asks for an audience. 
Yeah, we don't want to... I feel like if we don't do what he said, he's probably just going to come back out here and kill all of us, so probably a good idea to do what he mm -hmm. says. All right. Is, is the <clears throat> sheriff so, safe to move? Uh, Yeah, you could probably move him. Where do you want to take him to? Probably not to bed. Maybe we can take him to his office before uh, we go in. All right. Yeah, I can help with that. So you go and you drop Stilton off at the station, and it seems like Kit's going to stay with him there. There's also the uh, the whorehouse under the bar, which might be safe. The what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the what? <laughs> <laughs> what is the what, what what would be like the talk to child skill <laughs> uh, either persuasion or intimidate based on your uh, particular motivations um, is this for talking to kit or talking to argo we need to I'm clarify <laughs> <here>. <laughs> uh i think i want to talk to kit um all right like i'm not I'm not trying to like reach out and make a connection here, but I am trying to let him know you need to stay here. Keep an eye on Stilton. We'll be back for you. If there's any trouble, just hide. Uh, all right, mister. Um, what do I do if he starts getting worse? Well, there's the million dollar question right there. Come straight for me. <laughs> all right. All right, and with that, it seems like everyone is probably headed to Mortadella's next. Is that about right? I could use a drink. Yeah. yeah. All right. So everybody except for Beck, go ahead and give me a notice check. Hmm. <laughs> That's a go. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> so many dice. dice. <laughs> Uh, would that be yeah. Cheetah Prince dice for the <laughs> Cheetah? I think that's appropriate. Beautiful. All right. As you are passing through Main Street, uh, you see the slumped over form of Rick Ryder slowly starting to stir where Lynn had deposited him outside of the saloon. He isn't quite looking himself. Now you take a good look at him. Uh, who's all going to notice this? Chance, Argo, and Conrad. You lay eyes upon him, and you realize there is something very wrong with Rick Ryder. Concurrent with the spread of those nasty pustules across his body, a lot of his fur is starting to fall out, revealing massive patches of dark discoloration beneath, where his flesh has begun to twist and warp in ways most unsettling to behold. Oh. 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 Yes. And what y'all hoeing about? <laughs> Lynn doesn't what see Gina. The... <laughs> and uh, Put Rick my hand rises. On my, on my gun. <laughs> oh, that, that's a smart move. Riz, uh, Rick rises with a groan, uh, slowly getting his bearings and getting onto his hooves. And he says... What? Anyone see that train would hit me? That's... That's Rick? <laughs> Just to be clear, I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, that you? Yeah, that's right. I got, you got something on my face. I right, put you down once, so why don't you go ahead and just stay there? Oh, you're the one responsible for this math of headache I got, eh? Well, <laughs> well maybe it's time that I pay that back in the side. He seems to be having difficulty speaking, as there is a long tongue that does not seem to fit in his maw. And you notice his teeth have grown sharper, as if... They are designed for something other than grazing as cattle do. Uh, uh Could I try to yell at him to stay put? Oh, sure. Give me an intimidation. Can do. Uh, 
Ooh. 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 Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is a lot of intimidation. <laughs> All right. You put him down once. You can put the fear of God in this, man. What are you doing? I think I'm just like <laughs> stomping forward. Still every like just putting myself before everyone else and just uh, creating some space and just saying, Rick, I'm going to need you to go ahead and s stay put. I swear to God, if if we end up in a party where we have a six person party, the biggest party we've ever had on this show, and if we end up getting fucking six familiars, six <laughs> minions in this party through the sheer force of a monster taming we have collected, you know, N Nico's gonna have a B, Lynn's gonna have Rick here, like, Conrad's gonna have the gremlin. I'm gonna lose my mind. I did not sign up to play Pokemon. <laughs> Literally walked up to the unspeakable monstrosity and just said, "Sit, stop, <laughs> sit, boy." So uh, basically, yeah, I think Rick's gonna do a sit, boy here. He uh, he actually falls back on his ass, his uh, tail much thicker than it used to be, and causes him to yipe as he reach, leans down onto it, and he says, "All right, Jesus, don't have to go getting uncivilized on me." Uh, I think that at this point, Lynn just turns to Conrad's. Do you think that has anything to do with the uh, little jar of blood? Starting to put it, two and two together here. Right. I mean, yeah, definitely. There's something, the blood is corrupted in some way, and it's changing his form. It's the sickness. <laughs> Lynn's just mut As, uh, Arco's just muttering to himself, like, I told that fool not to go out too far. We had a system. Bucky never fucked this up. What do you mean, go out too far? Look around us. What do you think is out there? Nothing good. A whole lot of nothing. Where the hell is Bucky? That's a good question. You haven't seen him all day. There's not a role for that, right? <laughs> to, to, to intuit. Notice Bucky. <laughs> no, you give a, a, a notice or a common knowledge. Feels like notice would be based on. Yeah, whether him or not he's being here around. finding traces of. I don't know. But it is my Wait, number, my thing I do. Maybe if I raise. No. <laughs> well, you ain't seen him around. Seen hide nor hair of him. Don't even see those uh, big old rabbit footprints of his uh, around anywhere either. Can I try and persuade this monster? Because it seems like he has some sentience still oh yeah um, what do you want to persuade him to do i just i just want to say you look real sick uh you got to stay put can you tell us what you encountered if you left the encampment i, I want to know no uh, y'all think i'm sick uh, i don't feel sick uh, i feel uh hungry actually we could go for some uh some little sausages. All right. Ones. Well, what do you got to say, Argo? Let, let's hear what you got to say about this. Can you get this giant mountain of a man with the leave me alone? Oh, you're his now. That's how this what? works. What do you mean I'm his? Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think oh, that's you're not the way ready to take works. responsibility for this, Lynn? I already said I didn't do this. <laughs> Why is he blaming you, Argo? Uh, that's not the important question right now. Rick uh, scratches himself with that uh, transformed set of talons he's growing, and you see his eyes drifting down to y'all's feet. <laughs> I gotta I'm gonna just like have my shotgun at the ready um just do a quick check yep there's shells in there uh if y'all need to go on ahead keep an eye on this one your call maybe we better tie him up 
Now, what in the cotton picket hell are you going to tie me up for? I'm a free citizen of this particular town. Under whose authority? Oh, Sheriff Stilton, of course. He said we could tie you up. Oh, shit, he did? <laughs> yeah, he Damn. wasn't too happy with you uh, messing up Mortadella's last night. Oh, that wasn't my idea. That was, and he looks up to Argo before he realizes he shouldn't say nothing more. Whose idea was it? I'd really like to know why I woke up in Stilton's office. <laughs> Every hero needs his villain, as uh, all Rick seems to say on that regard. Argo, did you see what happened? Of course I saw what happened. I stopped it. Like I, I always don't do. don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I, 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 ju I, ju I gestured at the infected man in front of us. Stopped it, huh? This is a whole other... We've been talking about last night. I think regardless of what we're talking about, I don't really trust anything you have to say at this point. Well, All right, well, let's stay on topic. There's a devil in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I agree on that. You can trust he's going to shoot us. I don't know what to trust from you. Mark, I trust this thing is going to try to, I'm guessing, eat our toes. I don't he's want that get, to He's happen. definitely he's getting hungry for our toes. Yes. Uh, as you mentioned toes twice, in fact, you see... Rick's eyebrows raise, and he starts considering some things that haven't really come to mind before. <laughs> Don't you be thinking about our toes. Why do you keep saying that? Uh, ladies, so tie him up. Yeah, you think you can tie him up? I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I think we can manage that. Alright. I got some rope. Of course I you... fucking have rope. <laughs> you get your rope out, and you manage to tie up old Rick Ryder. Give me a strength check. I want to see how good the, your tie job is. Oh, Ooh. I'm going to use a Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's good and tight. Oh, uh. oh yeah, that's a that's a good nod. You could full Shabari this man if you wanted. Kind of. <laughs> But you make sure those wicked claws of his ain't going to have enough room, enough leverage to swipe through those ropes and get him undone. That ought to hold. That ought to hold. For now. You behave, okay? Best I can. Mm. Don't trust <laughs> that nun. Well, the nun's dead, so... <laughs> All right. With that, y'all heading into the bar? Yeah. Yeah, I'm heading I don't think there's in. any more delay in it. All right. Let's say goodbye to Rick then. And get the... <laughs> oh. Oh, Jesus. Argo disappears. Where'd Argo go? Where'd Argo? <laughs> I don't want to introduce myself to the, the monster. <laughs> You know what? That's probably the smart thing. The smartest <laughs> thing you've done all night. All right. The bar seems pretty empty now, save for that mysterious stranger that just rolled in and for Mortadella. Beck, when you came in here, you saw her cleaning up after all the people who'd done cleared out at the sound of the gunfight just down the road. And she locks eyes with you, and you see her eyes are full of fear but she don't raise a ruckus she don't scream she don't yell she takes one look at you and wordlessly starts fixing you up a meal seeing how's you just skin and bones walking into her establishment you get the impression she's just not capable of turning away a hungry mom so Beck stands in the door uh, of the saloon, darkening that doorway for just long enough to scope out the entire bar. Uh, 
Can you give me a rundown of every person who is currently in here uh, as I am danger sensing what I have just walked into? Are there any threats? Are there any living people other than Mortadella? It is just Mortadella. This place is eerily quiet. You do get the impression that it was full of people just minutes ago. There's mugs and plates strewn about and that uh, she seems to be bussing as you get here. Mm -hmm. It seems like they all cleared out because the sounds of that gunfight out on Main Street. So I think after a moment of standing there, uh, Beck begins to walk just slowly up to the counter, perches himself on a stool, then moves, unholsters his gun, makes it very clear that he has it, and then sets it on the counter within reach towards her, but not pointing at her, just to make it clear that he could fire if he wanted to, and just says, Madam. You see her trying her best to calm her nerves. She takes a deep breath and responds to you with a soft head nod to acknowledge your presence. She ends up getting some sausages down that are strung up above and arranges them on a plate for you. Another look and she thinks better about adding some vegetables to that plate. But then she starts looking through the bottles arranged behind the bar and grabs a bottle of tequila and sets that down before you. And she asks, you drink the worm? Hmm, got anything Irish? Can't say we have a lot of demand for that out here, but I think we have something in stock. And she does manage to procure a bottle of uh, Irish whiskey. Perfect. I think Beck, despite putting on an air of intimidation and strength, uh, Beck believes in uh, freedom and honor and respect, uh, but in the way that a criminal or an outlaw believes in these ideals. Uh, And so he is just sitting there at the bar, quiet, doesn't look her in the eye, isn't watching her, is just waiting for his meal and his drink, waiting for his guest to arrive. And it doesn't take too long for your guests to follow up coming on in to the meat wagon on Beck's coattails. So I think just then, as he hears the doors to the saloon open, uh, Beck just reaches over the counter and grabs two of the crystal glasses that are just sitting there, pulls them over, and just takes the bottle that she had placed and just pours himself two fingers of Irish whiskey and then pours two fingers of Irish whiskey in the other glass and sets it down in front of the chair next to him, the stool next to him, without even looking behind, and just says, took you long enough. Yeah. (laughs) So I'll just, uh, I'm gonna go right ahead and just sit down uh, next to Beck. Now, Beck, give me a notice check as this duck sits down next to you. Perfect. Uh, Let me do that. His notice is bad. Oh, that's exactly what I needed. (laughs) That's great. Love that. Oh, all right. That's a raise despite him having a bad notice. So not only do you notice that he is carrying himself as if he was not just shot in the gut, Speaking to a degree of fortitude you did not expect in him. You think back to when you saw him shoot the nun in that burning church with the haste that he pulled out his weapon and the certainty with which he fired and took that life. You don't think this is his first time doing that. Mm -mm. Beck pulls up the glass, takes a long sip. The ice clinks in the glass as he does it. 
takes a deep breath out and just goes. Every bullet fired is a debt incurred. This isn't your first debt, is it, little man? Uh, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Didn't think so. Real men drink when they talk business, so take a sip, or I'll know you're not serious, and I'll put a bullet between your eyes. I instantly grab it and uh, drink it down right away. Mm -hmm. That's the good shit, too. Uh, Nicodemus, if you've arrived, you realize that's the uh, the top shelf whiskey that you have provided to this establishment that probably shouldn't be wasted on uh, everyday drinking, but this is a special occasion. It is indeed. I don't complain. I have a... Uh, I might need to roll for it, so tell me <laughs> if I need to roll for this. Does Beck smell the magic that healed Conrad's wounds? I'm going to say with that raise, you do smell something otherworldly, something with the stink of the other side radiating mm. off that wound. But you can't tell what exactly caused it or where it came from. Just that gotcha. that's where it is now. How much do you know about this place? Not much. Um, before things changed, I uh, received a warning from Cape Karma. Uh, I was operating the heliograph tower, and we sort of had this non-distinct warning, uh, saying that something bad was coming, and then we lost signal. Uh, the two people I was working with left town. I drew the short stick to keep watch at the tower to see if we'd get any more signals. Um, you know, it was the following night uh, that things went dark. And that's pretty much all I know. Unfortunately, I pretty much stayed uh, at the edge of town most of this last month. Let me put this straight. Y'all have been here for a while. I know time don't work here the way you're used to. Have you tried to leave this place? I haven't, but from what I gather, there's a guy we just tied up outside who did try to leave, and he's not looking very good. Mm. A step forward. You know how? It's, uh... It's complicated. Take a seat. Mm. So... Beck <laughs> reaches over the counter again, <laughs> grabs another glass, sets it down next to Nico and just pours him a glass. Uh, as he goes to, uh, to, to slide the glass over to him, he pauses for a moment and goes, you know who you're drinking with, right? Someone who's drinking my whiskey. Good answer. Then he puts it down. Uh, Beck, uh, you know, appears relatively reticent to discuss this too much, not because he has any sense of fear in him, uh, but it's almost like he's struggling to put concepts into words. Mm -hmm. uh, and he just, after a moment of maybe chewing on it a little bit, taking a bite of his food even, he just says... It's called lots of different things. This place, the other side, the dream. We walk it. You might have heard in legends told by the natives of dream walkers, people that pass through the unconscious. Something like that. There's a bit of truth in everything. Now, I'd like a notice check from everybody but Beck. Nope. <laughs> nope, ain't seen shit. All right, so Conrad, Nicodemus, Chance, 
uh, you three notice... Uh, did I see one? Oh, yeah. Conrad Nicodemus Chance. You three notice, as you're standing in this bar, the shadows being cast by the dim lights flickering overhead are acting in an unusual manner. They are casting both the shadows of what exists within here, along with a shadow of something that you don't see. It almost looks like there's a large feral beast stalking along the walls of the saloon, cast in shadow. It seems to linger near Beck in particular. Beck, your shadow, the one that walks with you, is stalking, yes, but not like it was before at the church. It seems more curious than it does ravenous. And for once, it almost feels sated, at least for the time being. That ever-present hunger that gnaws at your bones has settled into but a dull murmur for this one evening. And Chance, you got a raise on that, so you notice... This shadow beast, this thing that stalks the halls, it almost sounds like it's purring. Oh. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) So let's talk business then. And I think Beck turns to Conrad, smirks a little bit and just says, You know, I killed many of your kind before. Government, I mean. You all do business your way. Um, out here we do business my way. Now I came here one way or another to find some people, and I've been looking for them for a very long time. I was gonna take my time hurting them. You hear me? I was gonna pull every one of their teeth out. I was going to shave their skin off as I made them listen to what I had to say. As I made them give up the names and the places that I would go after this. And you took that great pleasure from me. You understand what you did. Now, the only reason you're still standing is because you, as much as I love to admit it, made a good point. Now you said there isn't a problem you can't solve, and boy, you made a big problem for me, and you are gonna solve it. As far as I can tell, there's one lead left. You seen that flag out there? And he waits for Conrad. So uh, I try to keep my best poker face and nod, but like a cartoonish gulp, like uh, <laughs> like emits from my throat <laughs> as I try and swallow. Uh, yeah, uh, I understand. I will do everything I help to can uh, everything I can to help. Um, at this point, Is that a good science role? What are you trying to understand with that role? I lay out my steel watch on the bar in front of me. I pull out my toolkit. I take apart my watch and I remove the second hand and our hand, leaving only the minute hand behind. And I apply the blood to it and I close the watch back up, basically turning it into a compass. Wow. You have made a Rick Ryder tracking compass. (laughs) Good job. Now you always know where Goblin Rick is. Uh, Do I need to roll notice for Beck to understand what he's doing? Or has my history tracking things in the other side given me the insight to know what he just did? You can give me notice or you can give me a cult. Oh, uh, they're the same. Let's do an occult roll for fun. Eh. You're not quite sure. You might need him to explain it to you. Mm. Can I roll a cult? Uh, sure. Uh, 
Uh, despite having to lean over Beck to see what's going on here, you do actually get a pretty good impression of what this is and what it does. It uh, makes sense to you that now you realize this blood is pointing to the thing it came from. So by keeping it wound up in that watch, that is essentially making a tracker that points to where that blood came from. Now listen. That flag out there mentions someone named Barbados. I need to know everything you know about this Barbados. Says this town here belongs to him. With me being on the outside of this town this whole time, I have no idea how long that sign's been there. So, anyone else heard anything about this guy yet? I roll uh, common knowledge. Yeah, sure. It's going to mention the heart. You haven't heard of him. I did see that heart, though. That's true. You could bring yeah. that up. Yeah. Uh, sister was acting funny uh, on account of she delivered a human heart or rather had Lynn deliver a human heart for her to our establishment, uh, mm. had something carved into it. You still have it? No, but I remember what it says. And I tell what him. did it say? Hmm. I think Beck is just sitting here in thought, a little bit confused. He's chewing his food he takes a sip of the whiskey, kind of finishes the bot the glass, and realizes for the first time in months, maybe since Lhasa even, uh, that he can taste this. That that ravenous hunger that normally clouds his his uh, senses is gone, and the food doesn't taste like ash to him. It tastes real. And it's, it's just very sudden and strange. And the fur on his arms begins to bristle. And he looks to the, the great beast that stalks in his shadow. What is Erebus doing right now? You see Erebus almost looks content. The beast is laying down its tail flickering back and forth as the lights above flicker. And you realize, almost like a tapeworm, he's just been taking everything you put into yourself and only just barely leaving you enough to survive, to make sure you are always hungry. Mm. Beck turns, uh, you know, to Conrad and looks at Nico and just goes, those people you know from the church, I didn't do that to them. They did that to themselves, and they'd done it before, too. Whatever you called them was not their names, let me tell you that. They were outlaws back in the day, traveling with some pretty nasty folk. I'd been tracking them through Utah. Made a turn south about two weeks ago. Couldn't find them. Their caravan split off. They'd been masquerading as Mormons, they call them now. Had no idea where they went. They apparently came here. Nicodemus, give me a faith check. Ooh, hell yeah. So you remember when Sister Alice Paisley and the good father that came with her arrived in town shortly before it fell to the other side and took over at the church. They said they came down from Salt Lake, but they didn't seem like no Mormons you ever seen before. So this is really starting to add up with this new information that Beck is providing. Yeah, because they were masquerading as Catholics. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Not right. Interesting. 
Tell me everything you know about them. Their names, at least, I can provide. The man on the cross, the goat, his name was Damascus. The nun, well, we all called her Billy, but her name was Wilhelmina. Their brother and sister, I knew her a long time ago, when she was maybe 12, 13. She'd been in this life a long time. Uh, Nicodemus is really, really concerned now because he didn't actually see the cross. Um, so this is the first you're hearing about it. Yeah, because as far as he knew, you, uh, Beck and Conrad had two things in common. Uh, that y'all were running into a fire and that you were shooting at a holy one. Uh, hmm. Does <laughs> I think Beck sees the concern in your face and just goes, Oh, you didn't see then. Lucky you. It was gruesome. Now, I know you probably think that I was the one who started that fire, but let me tell you, it was gore top to bottom by the time I got there. Conrad, or not Conrad, doesn't know his name yet. Uh, mm-hmm. The duck here. He's got good eyes. He can tell you what he saw. Ain't that right, boy? What did you doesn't see? have good eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he made his own yeah, eyes. It, uh, it wasn't Beck. I mean, the carnage that was in there was widespread, and not all of it was immediately fresh. Um, so, yeah. There was a big God. mess there before Beck got inside. It was people? Yes. Jesus. So, now, what I can say is, places like this don't end up here by chance. This isn't just the normal way things happen. It had something to do with them. We're gonna get to the bottom whatever this is about, whatever brought you here and made this wrong space, it's gonna start with them and whoever this Lord Barbados is. And here's I'm thinking, this is an opportunity. Now, a long time ago, maybe five years ago, I wandered into the office of a woman I planned to kill. And it turned out, through some clever negotiation on her part, that that would have been a mistake for me. It presented an opportunity, and I see in this moment an opportunity. One that will lead to great success, maybe for all of us. Most certainly me, most definitely me. And you see he laughs and then reaches to the bottle and pours himself more whiskey and takes another sip. Says... Well, first things first. I suppose an introduction is in order. You might have heard of me. My name is Taslin Beck. Some people think I died. They're not wrong. And yet I'm still here. And I plan to make it to the end of this here pickle. Duck here owes me a favor. I have no business with the rest of you. But I can say the Taken may be good if you stick around. What do you say? Are we in business? I pour myself another shot, hold it up, and I say, The name's Conrad. I collect mold spores and fungus. And then I just take a shot. (laughs) (laughs) Nicodemus helped manage the resources to kill to keep people healthy. You can get us out of here. We're in business. We'll have to see about that, but yeah. Now, I ain't making any promises, but the Dream Sea is a dangerous place, but it can be walked. I think Beck walks looks up to at... the bar. Oh, like, go I'm on. not going to be left out of this. <laughs> and takes a seat on the other side of Conrad. Hmm. 
Anything's not. better than sticking around here. Name's Chance. That's a lucky name. Been lucky so far. I think Beck swivels to get out of his seat and just says, I am a bit of a cat person. And then <laughs> walks over to the shadow, the cat that's on the wall behind him. Mm -hmm. uh, Beck reaches down to touch the shadow, to touch Erebus. Uh, does Erebus respond in any way? So as you approach it, in the same way that your shadow cast upon the wall grows larger as you get near mm -hmm. it, he grows larger as you get closer to him. And as you reach down to touch him, it's almost like he lashes out and wraps around your arm, becoming one with your shadow again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask Ka a question that everyone <laughs> else won't understand. Is the thing Beck was reaching for now in his hand? Oh. Yes. Okay. Ah. Beck now turns back around, walks back to the bar, and says, Now listen here, proof of contract. If you're still mad about that wound I put in your gut at the time this is over, you can take this and make amends. And he sets the bullet that was loaded into uh, Sister Alice Wilhelmina Hersene's gun and just leaves it standing upright in front of Conrad as he begins to walk outside. Of course, I just I pick it up and look at it and just kind of think, holy shit. I just put it straight in my uh, breast pocket. He just got his autograph. Now, as he's walking outside, I think Beck just goes, there's no way to tell how the Dream Sea will treat us, but we can go look and see what the conditions are like. Now, before you can mosey on out of here, someone else does show up in the meat wagon. Let me go grab it. Coming through the doors in this somewhat full already establishment now that all y'all are here. You see the deputy. A uh, rather diminutive fellow uh, that Argo has had many run-ins in, run with the past. Who struts right in, not a care in the world clearly not aware of what's been going on tonight. And uh, he stretches and looks around and immediately spots Argo, but thinks better than to point him out. But uh, he uh, struts on up to the bar, his spurs jingle jangle jingling, and he says, Hey, Mortadella, what the, what's on the offer today? <laughs> this poor man is just completely unable to read the room. I think Argo was just staring at him wide-eyed, just, like, doing that, like, cutting motion at the neck to stop. Like, no. <laughs> uh, Mortadella looks very scared right now. She is not responding to him, and it's causing him to look around, confused, and his eyes settle upon Beck. And he squints a little bit, and he says, Do I know you from somewhere? Can Chance try to steal off his deputy badge? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a very good idea for this man's safety. Give me a thievery roll. That would be the funniest <laughs> fucking thing. Uh, that That's a success. You needed a four. <laughs> oh my god. Did just, he just put that in my so, pocket? Just I think save right, Bucky's life? <laughs> I think comedi comedically, it's like... It's uh, the, you know, Bucky here asks that. And as Beck is wheeling around to look at him, <laughs> it's like a, whoop, just a, whoop, 
and then just the badge is gone. Like it disappeared <laughs> behind Chance's hand. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think Beck rests his hand on his gun uh, in the way that like a desperado does, where he's not showing that it's a gun, but his hand is ready to quick draw, and he just goes, I don't know. You tell me. Hmm. No, can't think of uh, where I might have seen you before. Oh, well. Well, <laughs> y'all, y'all hear that weird commotion that's coming out the uh, the printing office down the street? I thought that place was closed up and nobody was living there no more. Total silence. Yeah. Uh, Beck is just <laughs> going to keep Merit's walking, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he just keeps walking on out. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Beck just walks through the saloon. He knows better than to fuck with, with to stick around when the law, law is here. I mean, yeah, even if he doesn't know he's the sheriff, he's like, I'm not, this is not my place. Yeah. All right. Because I think, cause I think Conrad's the only one who knows about what was going down over At there. At the print office, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Bucky, uh, Buck Deputy Bucky here will uh, stand on up and uh, sit himself down at the table and... Uh, he has to move real fast because his pants fall down with his uh, deputy badge belt buckle uh, taken. He's like, oh, what the <laughs> hell did I get off to? I thought I put that on this morning. Huh. Uh, I'm going to spend a penny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, doing? what you persuading? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, the sounds you heard, nothing you got to worry about. It's just a science experiment I got going on. Uh, pay, pay no attention to it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's it's, it's highly though. sensitive. If you if you so much as go in there and disturb the amount of light that's in the room, it could uh, really damage what I've been working on. So uh, oh, yeah, it's like one of them of phonographs. Exactly. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be it for me to impede the march of science. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Oh, Y'all have a good one. Now you here. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you needed to persuade him. Yeah, <laughs> it's just one extra sh- assurance that no one's messing with that little gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> no comment on the uh, the tied up guy outside. Hmm. Oh no, that's normal around here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, are any of the rest of y'all departing after Beck, or do you want to share words with each other while he's out at earshot, hopefully? I'm, I'm definitely getting up and going after Beck. Yeah. I can't not find out what the heck he's talking about. Yeah, exactly. just like, I, I don't have to follow behind. I feel like I have nothing to resolve at this point. I'm lucky that uh, I'm alive and that uh, sure are. Yeah, that, that Beck is I'd rather be indebted to him than be dead. So I'll, that's what I'm working with. I'm just going right. to kind of also like try and like calm down Mortadella again and let her know that things are under control. What the hell was that? Was that really a legendary outlaw Taz Lindbeck, as people keep saying the full and sober pay? Hell if I know, but it's no weirder than what we've been seeing lately. Oh, goodness gracious. I think I'm going to have to shut the bar down for tonight. All we know is he thinks he's Beck, so let's treat him like one. Yeah, I've seen plenty of folks that think they're Jesus, too, but they don't usually have a gun. <laughs> 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 well, you know, we got plenty of wine, so. Yeah, I guess we do. <laughs> All right, you take care now, Shug. I don't want to see you getting hurt. Take care of yourself. Then I walk out. All right. Argo's gonna grab Lynn on the way out. Yeah. Where were you? <laughs> where that? Where are you going? You are not following them. You just want to stay in this town and rot away like Rick out there. This is Conrad's mess. He started this. You think it's a good idea that the way out of all of this is to sign a deal with the devil? Walk into the wasteland? What's more important is that the stuff that we've got ain't gonna last forever, so we need to actually have some resources if we want to stay here or leave. 
it's like that meme where like the person raises their finger up like they're about to say something it's like i'm ready to try to like defend or explain my situation once again and i just i just i don't say anything <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really for anyone else anyway <laughs> also i miss my bees argo's just repeating the line like this is not our fight yeah neither is this town I'm not trying to stay here any longer than I need to. And it's already been a long time. He made sure of that. So we see a way out. Gonna try to take it. This place has been holding that, holding on by a thread for the last month. And I know you felt what happened when he got here. It got worse. And what I heard is a possible solution. Do you have one? Hero? We've made it this far, haven't we? This far? We haven't gone anywhere. We're in the same place we've been for the last 30 days. Living is winning. <laughs> is surviving on what's essentially rations really living? Yes! <laughs> and well, how long does that last? That's a great point, Argo. We need more <laughs> rations. <laughs> <laughs> Food's running out. As you can tell, people that try to go out come back, come back all messed up. Your little uh, friend out there. You want to explain all that? And your answer is to follow them. We well, made my no own choice. argument. Oh, I'm not really concerned if you come with us or not. And I, Conrad just walks out the door. You can stay here and survive until the rations go out, then figure out what to do from there, but... Can we make persuasion checks for players, or is that yeah, a... Yeah, those yeah. are fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> can, I tr can I try and persuade Argo? Yeah! Um, to come with us, um... So I guess I'll roll perf perf uh, persuasion first. And that'll be a spirit from Argo. Nicodemus convinces Argo everybody hated that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand, George. You're playing wrong. You're supposed to convince the annoying party members to leave. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Tell Will so, to shoot. Listen. You help me get some good stuff, I'll make you something special. All right? <laughs> All so right. you used your talk to child role? Yeah. <laughs> well, unless Argo's uh, going to roll a spirit against that, that sounds like a success to me. What is his spirit? Let's see. It's a D8. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. Oh. Oh, no. Bro. Oh, no. Okay. The good <laughs> stuff. Like this man even knows what the good stuff is. <laughs> you can't ki you can't kid a kidder. Kind of want to like try to intimidate you into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and like the flavor on that is like if you stay here, you're going to die. <laughs> you will die. Especially when I'm not around. When all of us aren't around, save your ass. Is that what you want? See that roll. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I'll spend a penny on that. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's a success, right? Yeah. It's a seven. Now, that's a success, depending on uh, if he wants to make a spirit roll against it. He's going to squeeze Lin's hand. It's like, what do you want to hear from me? That I'm fucking terrified? Because I am. But what we have okay. here is certain. It might even be progress. We have something here. Out there is nothing. If you walk out there, you never come back.
This isn't somewhere where I want to come back to. Uh, Argo drops his hand. Leave. And he stays there as they leave. Ooh. Alright. Seems like everyone else is heading out back onto Main Street. Argo hey, made Rick. one point of sad. Actually, Argo, you're going to get a Benny. And uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but Nicodemus, you get one point of conviction. Damn. For uh, saving Stilton. What is Against that? all odds. Conviction is almost like a super Benny. It persists between sessions and puts you, when you ah. redeem it, into a heightened state that is extremely good in combat. Excellent. We can go over the specifics of that when you choose to cash it in. Okay. It's I'll extremely strong. It basically means you should be just succeeding at whatever you want for a turn. Yep. Excellent. So, when everyone gets out here, Beck is kind of in the road, but standing in the shadow of one of the buildings. Uh, the shadows that have been cast by this strange, dreamy light. Uh, and uh, I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, how much if this even needs to be rolled or anything, but. It's clear as he's standing there and has as he's moved around, Beck mostly walks in shadow. He doesn't walk in most of the places that the light touches if he can't help it. And you see as he's making his way towards the flag that's just sort of out in the center of the road, um, that he's walking along these path, this like sort of shadowed path of like here's like a building awning and a and a light pole, and uh, you know it, all of these different places, kind of moving through the darkness rather than the light. And Conrad, what's that notice for? What you looking for? So I built my uh, compass without even knowing what it was pointing at, really, initially. Um, All right. Well, do I following notice that, it will take you right to Rick Ryder, who is still, like, sitting there, uh, cross-legged, arms crossed, like, pouting like a child, and but staying put as he has been instructed. I just have a moment where I'm just kind of like, oh, that's what that's pointing at. Uh, okay, then. When Beck notices Conrad sitting by him and like paying special attention to Rick uh, Beck just looks up and kind of speaks to them generally and says now you want to stay out of the dream light if you can help it doesn't happen all at once but after a while it'll do that to you that's what we call an example and what an example Definitely not something you want to follow in the footsteps of. What does it look like? The what do you light. mean? The dream, dream light. light. Oh. Out here, you might notice looking outside of the bounds of this well-defined town, that things get a little hazy, things shift. But sometimes things stay a bit in focus. The way when you're in a dark room for a long time, things begin to come into picture. It's all around us, this moonless light. The best way to keep safe here is stay out of it. You won't be able to avoid it for forever, but as far as you can get for, from it when you can, the better off you are. Underground might even be the best. And he just points to the sky. And as he's raising his hand, his hand sort of moves out of the shadow. And it's sort of like the shadow is steam coming off of his hand, kind of evaporating as this sort of dreamy, purplish dream light is hitting it. Uh, emanating from this moonless, starless sky above us. 
Now, Nicodemus, that tracks 100% with your observations from down in the basement beneath the meat wagon. It seemed like whatever corruption was touching this town and causing things to decay was definitely much slower down there underground. So what I'm getting at is if you dig a tunnel or you make a shelter underground, you're safer than if you sleep under the moonlight. Oh, most certainly. <laughs> now this light, hard to explain. The dream is a collection of ideas. Ideas that are iterated upon and changed constantly. It moves from place to place, person to person, shifting as you walk it. And you want to stay out of that shifting sea. Now the further you go out there, the further you go from these people, the worse it's gonna get for you. Being lucid in the dream is not a blessing. Your mind is not built to understand the horrors of that reality. It's safer here. We call them domains. Who's we? Oh, you really don't know much, do you? We are but visitors to the dream. There are whole civilizations here. They call them endemic life, I've heard. The kind that just propagate and live pop into existence at our very whims, trickling down from the top side like ideas discarded from forgotten memories. They live out there. My guess is this Lord Barbados, he's one of them. But who knows? It's hard to say. I think as Beck is saying this, he's walking towards the edge of town uh, walking towards sort of where the, the the landscape starts to become mirage as far <laughs> as he can go um, and staying within earshot. And he stops kind of just short of where this fog, this kind of dreamy haze is rolling in. And then he just kind of stops and says, I don't... <clears throat> I'm not a learned man, you see. What I know comes from experience. I heard someone once, a witch, refer to it as liminality. A sort of state between places. That's the key to coming down here, to walking through the dream. That space right before you fall asleep when you start to lose focus. That's the key to walking through the dream. And just as he says this, he goes to pass through the barrier. Does anything happen? Not immediately. You feel yourself start to pass from the safety of the town, but it's gradual. It's not something that will just snap you're in the deep now. It's something that you feel the swirling pressure of sub-reality twisting around you in a way that makes the stomach churn and makes the mind wander, but isn't having any immediate outward effects. And Conrad, as Beck describes this land and the endemic life forms here, your mind immediately snaps to that captured creature. Yes. If there are civilizations here, if there are people here, it might qualify as one and it might be able to lead you to more. Yes, that was my immediate thought. I want to go check up on him now if I can. All right. Uh, are you going to alert the others or try and slip away? 
Uh, no, I'm gonna tell them what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, hey, yeah, so this is gonna sound weird, but those uh, endemic life forms he was talking about, I think we got one. Uh, I basically tied up this creature thing uh, in a box that I made, and uh, I'm gonna go check on him. I'll be right back. Does anyone follow? <laughs> uh, do you need help with that? Would you like help with that? Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, uh, come with. I, I could maybe use a hand, potentially. Creature thing? Yeah, I mean, so. Beck, um. This is more of a GM thing between me and Ka, but Be Beck was testing to see the limits of this domain, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that has happened before. Beck has been, he has walked the dream desert. He has seen places and come to in various lands. But as we mentioned last session, this is very rare for him to suddenly be grounded in a place that was not dreamlike, that is lucid. Um, and so as he's stepping out, he's trying to test kind of where that liminality is, where that, that entryway to the outside would be. Is there anything I need to roll to see if he finds that? Yeah, give me an occult. Okay. Uh, occult or focus? I'll say either one. I'm gonna roll focus because it's better. And Nicodemus tried to help with that. Yeah, sure. Oh. Uh, you can give me an occult for Nicodemus. All right. Uh, neither of you are finding any like hard limitations, like a membrane to pass through. It almost feels like the descent into the otherness of the other side is gradual here. And Beck, that strikes you as odd because most yeah. of the places you have visited here that are safe from the deleterious effects of the other side do so with intention almost like a barrier or force field. Like a hard line. Yeah, a hard line. Whereas this feels gradual and may in fact be slowly receding. I'm gonna strike slowly up some- Receding? Receding, as in okay. this town may not suffer that protection much longer. Gotcha, okay. Um, does I want, uh, well, I want to let Nico, Nico speak. You had something to say? I repeat what the heart said, which is the father knows your shame. Uh, oh. You said you knew her. Yeah, I, I did. I knew her a long time ago. And the father, hmm. I think Beck turns back and walks back into town and kind of walks like right up to Nico and kind of squares away with him. Like he's he's about a foot away from him, like closer than maybe he should be, but in the way that a very intimidating person doesn't understand their own boundaries. And he kind of looks directly at Nico, uh, Nico like in the uh, in his eyes. And he makes really direct eye contact with him. And this might be the first time anyone is seeing Beck's face, like, truly front on. His left side is just kind of marred in, in this scar. He has a, his eye is really cloudy and yellow on the left side. Um, his fur is kind of singed away. He has these burn marks and they, they kind of go down the side back to the back of his neck as if he was, like, laying face down in a fire at one point. And he just says, in an almost solemn way, his his eyes um, filled now with more concern than anything else. Not fear, but almost a hopeful concern, that kind where you're almost wishing for the worst. He says, you ever heard of a man named Edward Kettle? Did I roll? You, you can give me a faith roll for that. So this is a particularly difficult role. 
However, a six is going to succeed. You have heard passing in not necessarily scripture, but like news print media that is relevant to uh, religious interests. Reports of someone named Edward Kettle a long time ago uh, forming his own religion. But that's about all you have committed to memory about this individual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At that... Beck but. grabs Nico <laughs> at, the, at the collar, wrong at answer. the collar, and is is like gonna growl at him, and he just says, "Is he here? Tell me where he is." Just heard about him in passing. This. He was the doesn't... religious guy. Mm. This doesn't shatter Beck, but it does shake him back to control and he just sets Nicodemus down <laughs> and scoffs and then just goes mm, we'll find him I'll tell you that and then he starts walking to wherever uh, Conrad was going who's taller uh, Nicodemus Beck, Beck is about 5'11 <laughs> so once again, me Listen. playing short kings that are threatening people much bigger than him. You have to, li you have to lift him under his arms like some. Uh... Aww. I love that we've set a standard that five nine is a short king. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> All Sorry, right. I'll... Yeah. Well, did, did I learn anything about the religion that he founded? Um, uh, do you I just know that just, it was just some religion? Some religion. A lot of people in the letters, they were essentially essays decrying like pop religion and how people were being gratuitous in making splinter religions without looking into a hat for the word of God like good old uh, Joseph Smith did. So I describe him as a cultist, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. More All things right. change, more they stay the same. So, we're gonna go ahead and follow Conrad now. Heading on into the print office. Let's see. The, I think that Lynn had probably followed along. All right. Not sure who else. So I think pretty much everyone except Argo is heading on into the print office. Does that sound right? Yep. All yep. right. Uh, Conrad. You hear rattling in the cage that has had the cover thrown back over it. Do you want to reveal this creature to the audience that has gathered around? Yeah, but before I do that, I'm going to sort of like uh, peek under the thing covering it to just sort of make eye contact with him. And I just want to see like what his initial reaction is uh, to me. Uh, it immediately lurches towards the the bars, knocking the cover off of the crate, and it, it begs you with pleading voice, and it asks, please, toes! And we're going to take our break there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go grab some toes. I'll be right back. Please? <laughs> <laughs> 